lead the Lord on to me. Come on, Zion. Help us in this temple. I need the
reading can be found in the book of Psalms, Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6. And the readers thus, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thy ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me. Yes, Lord, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou art my hope, O oh Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holding up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowel. My praise shall be continually of thee. We thank God for the blessed reading of his word. And at this time, our service will be turned over to our praise and worship team.
for him to have his way in your life. Yes, Lord. So much is going on. So much darkness all over. But how many of you all that just open your heart to allow God to come in? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid that he's going to change who you are? Are you afraid that he's going to do something, miracles in your life? We need the Lord to have his way. As I was sitting there, there's some things I still need God to do for me. Lord, have your way. Have your way. You can't just sit there and not be affected by what was just said. Lord, have
If you can praise him while you're going through. If you can praise him while you're going through. You will soon be out of the situation that you're in. But you gotta praise him while you're in it. We've been praising God all through this pandemic. At some point, the Lord is gonna bring us out. And we're trusting and believing that he's going to do just that. I stand before you at this time to give the Lord an offering of praise, a sacrifice, a give unto the Lord. It is offering time. We ask that you set your hearts and minds as we give unto the Lord. Those of you who are watching us live stream, you can give through Givenify. our credit card machine. And those of you who have that old-fashioned cash, you can give that way also. The spirit high in this place. So we're giving with a cheerful spirit. And on today, our leader, Pastor Hughes, is sharing his offering. Our first lady, she's sharing her offering on today. The elder Roger Groves is sharing his offering. The minister Johnny Sawyer sharing his offering. Yours truly sharing my offering on today. We have Sister Barbara Wilson. She's sharing her offering on today. Sister Carolyn Hall. She's sharing her offering. Sister Patricia Gregory and Missionary Deborah Gregory. They're sharing their offering on today as well. We have our offering, a ties and offering from Sister Deborah Early Williams. We have Deacon Wilbur Hartfield. We're glad, to, we're glad to see you, Brother Hartfield. He's sharing his ties and offering. His wife also, the Minister Jerry Wilson, is sharing his ties and offering. Sister Hartfield, her ties and offering. And we have a neighbor of our pastor. Sister George Willie is also sharing a tie, her ties on today. So I ask all hearts and minds to stand as we prepare to bless the Lord. And hold that off up to me. Precious Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you have done thus far, oh Father God. We thank you for the spirit, oh Father God, that's in this place. We pray, oh Father God, touch every heart on today. Touch those who have brought their sacrifice on today and give unto you, oh Father God. We pray that you bless, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. Press it down, oh Father God. Cause it to run over, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the give, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. We pray. Thank God.
and it will be streamed via Facebook, New Community Temple's Facebook. And that's Christmas Eve at 6 p.m., uh, Christmas Eve candlelight service, and the theme is Let the People Rejoice, A Savior is Born, from Luke 2, 1 through 20. Also, I sent out an announcement uh, in the wee hours of this morning <laughs> that I will read on behalf of Evangelist Gaynell Burton. Um, it is a, a announcement for prayer and consecration on the last Tuesday, amen, of this month, December 29th. She is calling for all licensed worker, missionaries, elders, ministers, missionaries, um, to please pair up with another uh, Elder missionary, elders minister or missionary, licensed worker, for one hour on that day. Uh, there are still slots that need to be filled. Please contact her or Evangelist Rhonda Gregory or Missionary Deborah Gregory uh, to fill one of those slots. Um, if you would like to pray, also contact her, amen. But she is looking for uh, the leaders of the church, amen, for this particular uh, prayer service. And then also to Christmas, if I to say Christmas. Christmas, Christmas is on the 25th as we know it, that is a Friday, so I believe that we will not be having YPWW on that Friday, uh, Christmas uh, afternoon, amen, uh, well Christmas night that is, in the event that changes, you will get an email from me, but I'm pretty sure we will not be having YPWW, we will pick back up accordingly once our pastor gives us a further advisement on that. So again, Christmas Eve service will be pre-recorded via New Communities uh, Facebook, um, and that is at 6, 6 p.m., and then also put in your hearts and minds in regards to the prayer and fasting for the last Tuesday of this month, that is the 29th, beginning at 6, I don't think I said that, 6 a.m., and then the last prayer uh, will be conducted from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And I say conducted because we know that the spirit will take over and it may be even longer. Amen. Govern yourselves accordingly to these announcements. Amen, amen. You heard that announcement. And as she said, you govern yourself accordingly. On this time right now, we will introduce our speaker. And I know him from a time of uh, sitting in the back corner there. He is a godly man. He is a man after God's own heart that will put the church first. Oh yes. That will do all he can do to build up the church. He is a husband. He is a father. He is a mentor. He is a Bible scholar. He is a superintendent. He is a very hard working young man that worked at all facets of the church. There is nothing that he cannot do. He lead by example. He is a quiet man. He is a man that has a spirit larger than his stature. He's preached the gospel. He tells the story and he walked the walk. Yes, Lord. And on today, we're going to hear from the Spirit of the Lord through this vessel that is going to give us what we need on today. We thank this humble man with a great smile. He is going to teach what the Lord has given unto him. And that is the form of our pastor. Oh, yes. Did you hear what I said? Our pastor. Yeah. Our pastor. Yeah. Pastor Elder Bruce Hughes. After we have a selection, the next voice you can hear is that of our pastor. Receive him with a amen. Amen. We all know that this is the Christmas season, but I'm a little witness that I'll give God all the praise. And God wants our total praise. Children may be looking for the presence, but God wants our total praise. And on this morning, we're going to sing total praise because we give God all the praise for waking up this morning and allowing us to see December.
in Jesus' love. Once again, we thank you for your love and for your kindness. Yes, Lord, Lord God, we thank you for your tender mercy. God, we thank you for you created us, God. You created us and made us up in your own name and new, God. We ask that you have your way in this place, oh God. Have your way, Lord. heal us to you, oh God. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Look Amen. upon your people, oh God. Yes, Lord. Many desire to be in your temple on today. Lord, and not able to make it on today. God, we ask you to touch. Touch, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord. Lord Freeman. Yes, Lord. Touch us in our little bed of faith, oh God. Yes. We thank you, God, for what you've done for us, oh God. Touch on today, oh God. In the name of Jesus. God, have done our way, oh God. And we yield ourselves to you, God. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray today, oh God. That you let the words of my mouth and follow the meditations of my heart. Lord God, let them be acceptable and pleasing in your eyesight. And these are the best we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We certainly give out to the Lord and Savior on today. Amen to the minister of Delbert Davis. Amen to preside and thank God for his kind words uh, during his introduction to the minister. Johnny Sawyer, Bill Roderick Rose, Bill Joaquin Ortiz. Amen to our chairman, Deacon, Deacon Chairman Mitchell. Amen. Thank God for my wife. Amen. Being here today, we'd also like to welcome uh, Sister Sheila Carl Jackson. Amen. We're glad to have you. Amen. To be in the worship of Amen. She's doing with town. We thank God for her. Amen. Being with us on today. We are live streaming our services and we are going as the law of angels that God will heal the land on today, that God will rid us of this COVID-19. But nevertheless, we give God the praise because he's great. Amen. He's worthy to be praised on today. David said, in every year we move. Amen. We have our beings on today. Amen. Brothers, if you turn the monitors up a little bit and turn the overheads down a little bit. Amen. And we want to read a few passages of scripture. Amen. We'll be soon be out of your way on today. Our scripture reading will be read in the book of Matthews, uh, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Again, our scripture reading will be read in the book of St. Matthews, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Now, the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When his mother Mary was a spouse of Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not thou to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, but thou which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And as she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now all this was done that Michael Fear was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name of Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God is with us. And we conclude at verse 25. And he knew her not that she had brought forth her son. And he called his name Jesus. May God all the blessing to the readers, hearers, and do a blessed word on today. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. In the presence of the Lord on today. Uh, we, in this year of 2020, we have experienced, uh, as Mr. David was saying, many challenges in life. Uh, the Lord has called home many of our family, friends, loved ones, and our hearts are heavy because of our love and compassion for them. But God has strengthened us. God has comforted us, and God has given us peace. Let us know that he's always with us, whatever we're experiencing in life. Uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic season, some people were uh, lost their job. Some were furloughed. And many were evicted from their homes. And even on today, they're trying to do things through the government that would assist the people who are in financial needs that will help them through these difficult times. 
Despite all the challenges and the hardship that we face today, we know that God is in control of our lives. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith on today. But in spite of all of that, we are baptized believers. We're saved and we're sanctified. But yet, there's trouble in the land. Regardless of our relationship with the Lord or how we feel about certain things, what our financial situation are, sometimes things are troubling to us. And we don't know what to do. We don't know how to respond. We don't know how to react. But we know that God is in control. Come on, Pastor. I was watching on yesterday uh, ABC's COVID-19 special, the CNN Town Hall, uh, where the hosts were Dr. Sante Gupta and Erica Hill and Big Bird, and the special guest was Dr. Anthony Fauci. And even that we realize that adults have problems, but sometimes even the children have problems coping with things that are happening in society. Uh -huh. Sometimes we need to address the situation on their level. So Dr. Fauci gave them words of comfort in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. One of the questions was asked, Dr. Fauci, will I be able to help my family and will I be able to go and visit my grandmother? He gave them the comfort, the peace, that yes. In spite of this pandemic, even though you are discouraged and your heart is heavy, you love to be with your family, your loved one, yes, there will be a time when you'll be able to fellowship with your family. Things will turn back to normal. Elmo's father explained to him the importance of having food drives. He told him that during the holiday season, this is an opportunity to help those who are in need. There are people who at one point were serving the community doing a food drive, but they were at a point where they need help themselves. So this is the time to help those who are in need. Some people need food and clothing and med medication. Children need toys and people need places to sleep because people are being evicted from their home because of this pandemic. But God is still in control. Another question was asked, well, Dr. Fauci, because of the COVID pandemic, will Santa Claus be able to come to my house? <laughs> come on, Heard it on the television that you said that we shouldn't have family gathering. We don't need strangers coming to a house. But is it okay for Santa Claus come on, Pastor. to come into my house? Yes, sir. Well, Dr. Fauci gave them that comfort as children need comfort. And you have to again address them on that level. He said, I personally went to the North Pole. <laughs> and I vaccinated Santa Claus. Come on, sir. Santa Claus has been authorized and permission to go to visit your house. So, Caden, <laughs> little Fred, come on, sir. Clean up your rooms. Yes. Teach it. Follow the instructions of your parents. Yes, sir. Because Dr. Fauci had vaccinated Santa Claus and he had permission. To come to your house. God has got it all in control. Yes, he does. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. He created this world. He knew everything about us. We must have faith in God. So if you allow me to say on this for topic on today, the Savior is born. It's more than about giving gifts. God sent his son in the word to redeem us back to himself. Savior is a person who saves and rescues and a person who delivers. Uh, especially God, or even Christ. Salvation is a state of being saved and protected from harm and etc. It is a source, a cause of being saved or protected from harm. From a theological perspective, it's deliverance from power. Delivered from the penalty of sin. It is redemption. Jesus came that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. Romans 6 and 23 said, For the ways of sin is death, but to get to God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Remember, our leader, the Bishop Ted Thomas Sr., preached a sermon a few years ago. The title of the message was The Mystery of the Incarnation. It's a mystery. We
study, we pray, we meditate on God's word, but overall it's still a mystery. Something we really cannot explain. We can't really comprehend who God is, who God planned this for us. He said, God, catch this, wrapped himself up in human flesh to redeem man back to God. That's heavy so. That's yes, sir. Right. God came down from heaven, My Lord. wrapped himself up in human flesh in order to redeem man back to God. That's what this holiday season is all about, is praising, magnifying the God of our salvation, accepting him as our Lord and Savior. He came to redeem us yes. back to God. And then incarnation literally means embodied in the flesh or taken on flesh. Incarnation is a central Christian doctrine that God became flesh, that he assumed a human nature, became a man in the form of Christ, the Son of God, the second in the Trinity. Christ is truly God and truly man. A saved, the Savior is born. Today, some people try to impersonate them. Think they, they are the way. They are the truth. They're the answer to your problem. But only one Savior. And the name is Jesus. The Jesus. righteous. Yes, sir. He's the Son of God. Yes. Even those sporting events I watch, baseball games, and the team will be ahead, and all of a sudden they'll get behind. They'll put in the picture with the call the closer. He will come in and save the team. And Allowed them to overcome their enemy to, to win victory. That was a closer. Mm. Jesus came that we may have that intimate and personal relationship with God. Isaiah 96, for unto us a child is born. Yes, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful. Yes, yes. Counselor. Yes, Lord. The mighty God. Yes. The everlasting Father, yes. the Prince of Peace. Yes. We must realize that man has sinned. From the, from the fall of man through Adam, man continues to sin. Uh -huh. Continue to be disobedient to God. Reached the point at one time God said, Repent of him that he made man. It was every imagination of man's heart was evil continued. God sent the flood and restored the earth. A man continued to sin against God. Uh -huh. Jeremiah Pickman Pad in the Pistol and John and a few words from the 31st chapter, verses 29 through 34. And in those days they would not say again, the fathers had eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are on age. Catch this, but everyone will die. Only for his own wickedness. Every man who eats the sour grapes, his own teeth shall be set at edge. Behold, the days come and say the Lord. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, which is the northern kingdom, and the house of Judah, the southern kingdom. Not like the covenant I made with their fathers in the days when I took them by the hand of Egypt, my covenant which they broke. Although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. But this is the covenant that will make the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord. Guess this. God said, I'll put my laws in their inward parts. And in their hearts. He said, I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Each man will no longer teach his neighbor. And the brother said, no, the Lord. For you shall know me. Through a personal experience. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, Lord. They were blaming others. When the parents were sinned, the children would also be punished. But the Lord said, The time is coming. Then you have to give an account for your own sin. If you sin, you will be punished. Yes, sir. When we pass down for generations and generations, I came that you may have life. Life. Yes, Lord. And that you may have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. You are having a personal experience with me. Mm -hmm. You will know me for yourself. Mm -hmm. I will forgive their wickedness. Mm -hmm. I will no longer remember their sins. Mm -hmm. 
No more. Bishop would often say, people will get upset with you. And they won't forgive you. And when the time comes, they will bring it back up. But the God that we serve, if we sin against the true living God, he promised to so believe it, please it that we will remember our sins no more. He will cast in the sea of forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. And we love him on today. Yes, Lord. And we lift him up on today. Yes, Lord. And we exalt him on today. Hallelujah. For he is our God. Yeah. He is our king. He is our father. Whatever I'm in trouble, I call on my father. He'll come to my rescue. So we lift him up on today. Thank you, Jesus. And she shall burn give us some. And he shall save their people from their sins. All this will happen to a field which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah in our studies on today. First John. St. John chapter 1, verse 19. Come on, son. The next day John said Jesus coming unto him saying, Behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sins of the world. Jesus came to save us from all of our wrongdoing. Thank you, Jesus, for God so loved the world. And he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. For God sent out his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus came to this earth and lived among sinners. But didn't come, didn't come to condemn the world. Instead, Jesus ate with the sinners. He loved them. He gave them an opportunity to escape from sin and be set free. While God is holy, he could have, possibly should have, sent his son into all the sinners to their death. He did the opposite. He gave them the gift of life. He gave them eternal life. It's time for you today to make a change in your life. It's time to accept Jesus as your Savior. You tried everything else. It's time to try Jesus. He's a mighty good leader. He's a Savior. He's a deliverer. He's a keeper. He's a provider.
He fed a hungry crowd with a little boy's lunch. He inspired millions of people by a widow who gave a widow's might. Will you try him on today? The book of Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. Before the voice of the prophecy was silent for over 400 years. Man continued to be disobedient. Man continued to disobey God and do whatever they wanted to do. God reached a point that he just stopped sending the prophets. Stopped sending the priests. Because they wouldn't take heed to God's word. Say the same to you all today if you don't know him. The winter opportunity will soon close on you. It behooves you today to get to know the Savior. Establish an intimate personal relationship with Him. The last spoke with other these souls to reiterate, reiterate what God was trying to reveal to His people. Four beyond a 400 year interval has been called a dark period in Israel history. In Christian pre-time because throughout it, neither the prophets nor the writers sent a word to God's people. Can you imagine? Yes, yes. So, so to think that you have a problem and you try to call to God and he don't hear you. Can you imagine? Your heart is overwhelmed. And you call God to help you to rescue you, but he doesn't respond. Can you imagine? You're afflicted in your body. Doctors don't know all they can do for you. About to throw in the towel and you call on God and he don't hear you. Because a man disobedience. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of Malachi, the priests were offering blind sacrifices unto God. They were offering the sick, the lame. The priests and the leaders of the church were doing evil in God's outside. Can you imagine our spiritual leaders disobeying God? Thank you, Jesus. The Lord said, from the rising of the sun, even the morning now, he said, my name shall be great among all nations. In every place, my name will be exalted. I will be exalted among the heathen. There was an appeal for a powerful, passionate, pleading appeal to repent and return to God. It was an appeal to come about a rich promise if the people respond and turn from the wicked ways, God will heal. God will deliver. God will set free. He cried out to the world today if my people call by my name. If you want to just humble yourself, seek God's face and From your wicked ways. God promised that He would hear us. He promised that He heal the land. We made it in our Bible discussion on Friday night. Mother Talent said that if anything that's in my life is not pleasing to God, anything that would cause God, to lift this plague, lift this COVID-19 pandemic, if it's me, we need to examine us, Lord, is it I? Am I the problem? Am I the one who's causing this plague to be in the land? It's me, Lord. Forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Purify my thoughts. Purify
without a spot of wrinkle. We have this new generation. They have their own relationship with the Lord. But regardless of what your beliefs are, follow peace with all men. Holiness. Holiness. Without no man shall see the Lord. It's not a denomination. God said, be holy. Yes, sir. For I am the Lord God. Holy. That's it. That's it. We must make a change. Look at the man in the mirror. Examine yourself in your relationship with God. Yes, Lord. Try your own self. Judge your own self. See where you stand. Your relationship with God. Well, John picked and pad and the pencil and John down these words. Some people say that, well, we're okay. That I have no sense. John said that we said that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. We lie and do not the truth. But we walk in the light and he's in the light. We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ shall make us whole. If we say we have no sin, we deceive our own selves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful. Faithful. And just to forgive us for all of our sins and cleanse us for all unrighteousness. My little children, these things are right unto you that you sin And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's our defense attorney. For the very when we do wrong, yes, we Lord. call on Jesus and Lord and me. He said, Father, don't destroy for the very. I'm here to stand for me, the good man. Yes, Lord. Don't destroy him. Plead him for us. Thank you, Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. But the blood. Yes. We have an advocate. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's our perpetuation for our sins. Not only for us, but also for the sins of the world. He's a Will you be ready to answer the call? Prayer changes oh, yes. things. Yes, it does. Mr. Deborah Berger testified the other day that when she was a child, and time to time she would fall ill. She would go to her mother and go to her grandmother. They would pray for her, and the Lord would heal her, and she would be free to go back and pray with her playing with her friends. When she got older, she finally accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. She said that I established a relationship with God. I can go to God for myself. And she seen God works miracles. She saw God works wonder. If he done it for me, he can do it for you. But you must Establish that relationship with God. I'm a living witness on the day that He can heal. Oh, yes. He can deliver. He can set free. Mother Taylor testified that one of our church members had a prayer request. Lady's son had been locked up in prison. They didn't even give him parole. But the prayer warriors got together. When the two or three gathered in my name, the Lord promised Come on, sir. that it be in the midst. The prayer warriors prayed that God let his record come before me, committed out of nowhere. My God. Thank you, Jesus. He can do it sitting the mother of all more you can ask or think. Shortly after that, 
The mother received a call. Said, come pick up your son. He wasn't eligible for parole. Wasn't qualified for parole. The mother got so excited and nervous she couldn't find her shoe. No, there it If you trust that God, that's it. He would never, never leave. Yes, sir. He's a promise keeper. He's a heart figure. Mind breaker lover. He'll give you peace in the midst of your storm. But you must trust him on today. Bishop Thomas said the mystery of the incarnation. God. The same God that said, let there be light. Light appear. Same God that slung the stars in the sky. Came down and wrapped himself. That's my book. God wrapped himself up in human flesh in order to redeem man back to God. So I want to tell you today that a Savior is born. And his name is Jesus. He came to save, heal, yes. and deliver, but most importantly of everything, that we may be in the right fellowship Thank you, Lord with Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. Question you today is Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Are you saved on the day by the blood of the Lamb? Are you sanctified? Is he your Lord and Savior today? Is he your friend? Is he your bridge over troubled water? Is he a shelter in store for you today? You're the giver of praise until Thank you, Lord.
Those who watch the live stream, God. Touch them in this situation, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, they don't know you're the part of their sins. Touch their hearts, God. Change their minds, God. In the name of Jesus. Look on the sick and afflicted, God. Touch them work miracles in their minds, oh God. Send the ministry angel by the bedside. God, do you thanks for us on today. We give you the name of praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Jesus, that's where I begin to thank you. Thank you. Serve it on today. 
Give strength, oh Father God, to our pastor. Who poured out, oh Father God. We pray, oh Father God, on today that as we leave this place, that your word go forth, oh Father God, in our lives. The word go forth in our homes, in our marriages, oh Father God. In the children, oh Father God. In the workplace, oh Father. Oh Father God, help us to remember that, oh Father God, that Jesus is the answer. The blood that was shed on the cross. No, oh, Father God, for every sinner, for every man, every woman, every child, oh Father God. Not for those who are saved, oh Father God, but for all mankind. So we pray, oh Father God, that let us examine ourselves. That we would take your word, oh Father God, and apply it to our hearts. We pray, oh Father God, that you take us over the dangerous highway. Take us back home, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus. That when we get there, oh Father God, we will say thank you. Thank you. Give us a spirit of thankfulness. Give us a spirit of expectation, oh Father God. And our hope is in you. That oh Father, even in these dangerous times, we can lean and depend on you. For you are our help in troubled times. Heal the land on today. Heal those who are afflicted, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus. Those who desire to be here. No, Father God, send your word. And it is so. And it is so. Now to him that is able to do it, sitting upon and above all that we ask or think, according to the power that working in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, where would I end? Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Be blessed.